எல்லோருக்கும் மாலை வணக்கம் குட் ஈவினிங் டு ஆல் ஐஎஃப் மெம்பர்ஸ் ஐ திங்க் நிஜமாலுமே ஃபுல் ஆஃப் மெம்பர்ஸ் யூ குட் சி திஸ் ஆல் நார்மலாக ஃபார்மாலிட்டியாக சொல்லுவோம் சார் ப்ளீஸ் சார் உட்காருங்க ஹால் இஸ் ஃபுல் மேபி த கிரேட் கோஸ் டு ஃபோரஸ்ட் ஃபாலிமர்ஸ் ஓகே முகுந்த ஓகே ஓகே பிஃபோர் good evening all iif members before we start uh, request is put your mobile phone on silent or switch off condition so that it not disturbing the seminar i think after corona we are all uh, moved to webinar online meeting everything and uh, physical touch has got its own advantages i am sure today's physical seminar would give a lot of value to you and uh, today we have a very big experienced speaker mr deepak kumar ghosh technical director from forest polymers to speak about I mean cure cold box now i request our chapter vice chairman mr vignesh amran to formally welcome the gathering please thank you mr sandil a very warm welcome uh, founder man it gives me immense pleasure in welcoming you all to this technical uh, seminar organized by the institute of indian founder man chennai chapter here at uh, ananagar we recognize the presence of our uh, southern region secretary mr r pani murugan welcome sir we recognize the present of uh, presence of our uh, immediate uh, past chairman mr shaktivel tirunavkar sir thank you sir and we are also thankful to the member companies for sending delegates in large numbers and we see members from uh, breaks india ashok leland nelcast mill castings and uh, uh, many other foundries thank you so much for your uh, support in uh, helping all our uh, programs attending in full uh, capability now coming to the topic uh, amin cured cold box some lesser known facts it's indeed heartwarming to have mr deepak kumar ghosh head technical found, uh, forest polymers to talk to us about the same and we are indeed lucky to have him with us he is an authority on this subject and uh, i request you all to put on your thinking hats and uh, give full uh, focus to mr ghosh and take maximum benefit thank you so much thank you vice chairman Uh, now i would request uh, mr palni morgan our honorary secretary i of southern region to introduce the speaker to the gathering please i have immense pleasure in introducing my very old friend and one of my well wishers of my career mr deepak kumar ghosh to the august gathering uh, his educational background he completed bsc honors in chemistry from university of calcutta in 1975 and uh, btech chemical engineering from university of calcutta in 1978 then uh, he, he did uh, mtech polymer technology from university of calcutta in 1980 and his association with academics invited reviewer archives of foundry engineering quarterly publication by Pol- polish academy of sciences poland then he is a life member of institution of engineers of india and chemical of course the experience he is a very vast experienced person i would say that he is one of the living authority on uh, resins i would, i can uh, confidently say that because uh, i have worked with him so he has got a he started his career in 1981 as a product engineer in calcutta based organization engaged with manufacture and marketing of synthetic resins mainly phenolic and alkyd resins and sand binders in foundries then he joined uh, ivp limited of course you all aware that one of the biggest manufacturer of resins in india he joined ivp in 1985 and continued till 2002 in various capacities related to r&d and technical support to customers ivp is a multi divisional company synthetic resins being one of those apart from processing various resins as foundry binders ivp are diversified interest for dealing with various resins mainly phenolics for various applications like butyl curatives hardening agent and tackifiers for rubber compounding powdered phenolics for applications as binders for refractory and abrasive grinds and molding compounds he is presently engaged with forest polymers private limited from 2002 and continuing till date as a director technical with the government recognized r&d laboratory is one of the most rapidly growing multi divisional organization in india he has got a wide base uh, forest polymers has got a wide base for product diversification they are one of the leading manufacturers of binders coatings and other consumables for foundry industry <laughs> apart from having a sizable market share in india they export their products to countries like uh, 
సౌత్ ఆఫ్రికా టర్కీ ఈజిప్ సౌ మలేషియా యుఏఈ అండ్ ఒమన్ ఫోరస్ ఈజ్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద లార్జెస్ట్ మ్యానుఫ్యాక్చరర్స్ ఆఫ్ ఫినాలిక్ రెజిన్స్ ఇన్ ద కంట్రీ విత్ వేరియింగ్ కెమిస్ నేమ్లీ స్ట్రెయిట్ అండ్ మాడిఫైడ్ రెజిన్స్ లిక్విడ్ అండ్ సాలిడ్ రిజల్ట్స్ నోవాలాక్ విచ్ ఫైండ్ అప్లికేషన్స్ ఇన్ మోల్డింగ్ పౌడర్ బైండర్స్ ఫర్ రిఫ్రాక్టరీ అబ్రెసివ్ అండ్ ఫ్రిక్షన్ గ్రైండ్స్ సమ్ ఆఫ్ ద నోవాలాక్ ఇన్ కాంబినేషన్ విత్ ఎగ్జామిన్ ఫైండ్ అప్లికేషన్స్ ఇన్ రబ్బర్ కాంపౌండింగ్ ఫర్ ఇంప్రూవ్మెంట్ ఇన్ ఆర్డ్నెస్ అండ్ మెకానికల్ ప్రాపర్టీస్ ఇన్ అడిషన్ he has attended gifa uninterruptedly for last 10 times this has given an opportunity to visualize evolution of sand binders for use in foundries particularly in india he attended ankyros turkey in last three occasions this is a mega event for showcasing each and everything related to foundries represented india on behalf of iif in brics foundry forum uh, in from 2017 at jagannathpur between 4th to 17th march presented a technical paper during proceedings visited several overseas foundries few being australia zec republic fallen turkey egypt israel iran malaysia uae south africa korea china oman pakistan and bangladesh and he drafted specifications for organic finders for use in foundries for bas mtd 14 contributed for preparing one dvd on foundry binders released by iif and presented a virtual paper on alpha set bonded sand in world foundry congress held between 16th to 18th june in sisa croatia two papers on alpha set have been published in archives of foundry engineering he is honorary reviewer of archives of foundry engineering a prestigious journal published from one of the countries in europe so i leave the for uh, floor to mr dipak ghosh so once again thanking uh, mr dipak ghosh for having accepted our request and uh, come here to present uh, this thing. thank you uh, thank you my friend palli murugan for introducing me and uh, exposing to what uh, more than what i am uh, honorable chairman vice chairman of if chennai chapter if uh, secretary our chairman i have uh, your southern region and fellow founding one uh, it is nice to see that uh, even in a week day so much of attendance i am really excited it never happens even in such uh, your big um, uh, your uh, in iif also you won't see this mass of gathering that means people here are interested and the credit goes to the local chapter of iif also for bringing so much of attendance so my paper is amine cured cold box from lesser known fox amine cured cold box popularly known as pucb or phenolic urethane cold box was introduced in indian foundries in 1980s then i was working in ipp handful of foundries basically two uh, tatas tata pune and tata jamshedpur they started experiment with the system and the mixers were all batch mixers even enor hinduja they adopted the process after a long time that time they continued with hot box and cell then slowly amine cured cold box slowly replaced your cell hot box completely and cell mostly so uh, what the reason for uh, uh, that the cell is being replaced by cold box is that it is a room temperature curing system requires less energy productivity is more but still why cell is still there cell is still there because there are certain cores which cannot be made out of cold box the cell is having the maximum out of box strength so let me uh, uh, let me start with what are the lesser known facts first it's first uh, your uh, you, definition if you go by the chemistry of the phenol formaldehyde resins you will see in the first page itself is written there are two varieties there are two types of phenolic resins novolac and resol novolac are those type of resins which are produced under strong acidic conditions i am going a little uh, technical side because uh, i believe in the last uh, four decades after introduction so many papers have been read and mostly these are on application side 
what is the amine temperature, amine pressure, all these things. But chemistry wise, many are interested to know what exactly the resin is, hardener is, and catalyst is. So, this uh, your acid catalyzed novolac resins are thermoplastic in, thermoplastic in nature, means it does not get cured without, without uh, hexamine. That hexamine is additional, it gives additional formaldehyde. So basically, if you want to, uh, 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 this example of Novolac is cell resin. Cell resin, Novolac dissolved in organic solvent or methanol, it is cell resin. And as you know, while coating hexamine in the form of powder along with calcium stearate is added. So then only it makes a curable mix for conversion of thermoplastic mass to thermosetting and giving, improve, uh, you're giving the much needed strength required from ejection of the box and making, handling, and then pouring. So next comes the another variety is Resol. Resol is just opposite. It is catalyzed by strong alkali. And among strong alkali, sodium hydroxide is the most commonly used. And without going in much uh, details, uh, there are many other factors. This is the ratio of the phenol formaldehyde and catalyst use. It is basically water and burn resin. It is not 100% water soluble, but it takes up water to some extent, maybe 10, 15, or 100. One is to one. 100 is to 100. And this example of this resin is that acid cured phenolic, which was being used in foundries to make mold and coarse after alkyd, um, replacing alkyd. So that is also more or less replaced by furan right now. But that is the classic example of results. And results can be cured by both by heat as well as strong air catalyst. This acid cured uh, phenolic, it is being used in foundries with the help of catalyst, curing with the help of catalyst. And if you see by heating, uh, the people, you must be aware that this uh, bricks are used for furnace lining. And one of the bricks are MACCA bricks, MGO carbon. And those binder for those are results. So these are the two main varieties of phenol formaldehyde disclosed in the literature. So now there is a third variety is very common, very not commonly known phenol formaldehyde resin. This chemically it is benzyl ether phenol formaldehyde resin because of the links of benzyl as well as methylol group. And these are lesser known PF resins. So this is the base resin for the phenol formaldehyde resin or part A. It is a three part. I will talk about part two and part three. There are, no, no, there are not much to do with those, but part A, a lot of uh, experience, a lot of knowledge is required to make the resin and make it suitable for individual founded customized. Since introduction in 1986 and 80s, it has been a lot of modification have taken place. Main modification, if you know, that time the resin usage of the resin was 1.2, 1.2 uh, percentage of sand. But now it has come down to level as 0 0.75, 0 0.75. So a lot of modification have been taken place. And I will go through the, your ins and inner sides of the synthesis of the resin. The name of the resin comes from the linkage of phenolic urethane. This urethane uh, linkages are taken place, linkage taken place between the reaction of phenolic resin and isocyanate. Then, uh, so this is the category of resin where neither strong acid nor strong alkali is used as catalyst. Here, mild acid acids are used, or mild acids, not direct acidic salts are used for catalysis of, catalysis of the reaction between phenol and formaldehyde. Resins produced are high viscosity. It is neither solid nor liquid and it is hydrophobic, meaning it does not get dissolved in water. Then uh, these resins are heat stable and does not require hexamine for curing. It is, being, it is cured in the room temperature with help of isocyanates and the reaction is triggered by amine, the triethyl amine in our country. Solvent for these resin types of resin are complex. There are Polar and non-polar blend of solvents are used. Polar solvent means these are ketones and 
esters of high boiling point. Why high boiling point? Low boiling ester, low boiling ketones. This will give quick evaporation and the bench life of the mixed sand, you will not get it. So there are a lot of uh, your, um, uh, uh, your uh, uh, research and development are done on the system to change the, to select the right solvent and not right solvent, right solvent combination. Now, what are the variations in the resin? You see, uh, when it goes to the foundries, it goes as a uh, liquid, right yellow or brown color. But it is not as simple that it looks like uh, any other uh, your uh, liquid. It is a combination of many uh, uh, components. The name, main one is what is called is the base resin. That is means condensation product of phenol and formaldehyde. In the base resin, what are the variables? Phenol and formaldehyde, mole ratio. Then type of catalyst it is selected. Then amount of the catalyst is selected. Then reactor parameters. I mean, at what temperature, what time, how many, how long, what pressure you are keeping, whether you are applying vacuum or not. So these are a lot of variables that are there in the base resin itself. And then it contains some unreacted monomer. No reaction is 100% complete. So there will be some unreacted monomers. And these monomers are phenol and formaldehyde. Presence of formaldehyde is felt in the atmosphere very quickly. It is very, very, very much eye irritating. And not only eye irritating, it is a potential carcinogen. So it's, this over a period of time, its concentration in the resin has been reduced to as low as 0.1 or not traceable. Whereas phenol, although not eye irritating, but it is also having some adverse effect on health. So it's, there is a limit for this phenol also in the foundry environment allowed, which is known as the TLV or threshold limit value, threshold limit value for the material in the atmosphere. In Indian formulations, base resin contains as much as 15% of free phenol. To reduce below that, it is possible, but that uh, many other changes you have to take, uh, you have to, uh, do it or carry it to because it affects other properties. When you keep on, uh, you are changing one parameter, other parameters are affected. Constituents of binder. So I told you, first constituent is the base resin and I contents of the base resin. Now base resin and final, uh, your composition, it contents base resin, solvent mixes, and some small additives to impart some special properties. Among solvents, I told you, the solvent must be chemical without active hydrogen ion. Active hydrogen ion in simple sense that you know this isocyanate or hardener, which is also called co-binder, used for, for condensation, for hardening of the resin. It is also called co-binder because you must have noticed that any other polymerization, any other system like furan, like two-part phenolic, like PEP set, there are some components which are added just like furan. Catalyst requirement is just 30 percent of the binder or 40. But here it is one is to one. If you used 0.8 percent binder, you use 0.8 percent hardener also. So it is an active hardening agent. It takes part in the polymerization to transform the material thermosetting mass to thermoplastic mass to thermosetting to give strength. And roll of triethylamine or TEA just to trigger the reaction. It is catalyst in true sense. Means it does not take place in the reaction. It initiates the reaction, then run away. And once the reaction is initiated, instantaneously the bonds are formed and must become rigid. And you can eject it from the pattern. So now you know base resin and solvents. Now base resin. How much base resin and how much solvent? That makes a very huge range. Maybe it is from 50 to 65 percentage. And within this range, there are so many properties you can change. And they are first step of customizing the formulation. For the sake of secrecy, I cannot disclose you the variation of base resin and it effects of final properties. But thing is that there are some foundries that need it immediate high strength. Of course, you never know whether it is required or not. 
immediate strength, then some require two hour bench life, some required back strength. So all a part of the formulation is related to the base resin content of the resin. So first part is over base resin and second now is the solvent. So suppose it is 50 or 60, so 40 is the solvent. So among 40 solvent, there can be three, four, five, six times depending upon the, it is an art of formulating the real binder and that varies from that value, formulation are extremely customized depending upon various factors, sand to sand, climate to climate and many other variables, the ADV of the sand, so many. And then again, the climate, that part I'll come out. You are using the resin in China, you are lucky the temperature is within 25 to 35, you can say. But uh, north temperature goes as low as 10 degrees centigrade. You cannot expect that the distribution of the your resin at the same tem that temperature will be as quickly as you get at 30 degrees centigrade. I'll come back next. So in solvents, there are many. These, there are two categories called polar and non-polar. Polar solvents are, these are uh, esters and ketones of high boiling point, not low boiling point, because low boiling point, once you mix it, then immediately it will evaporate into vapor and give the bench life will be reduced. So high boiling esters and ketones. Then um, polar, non-polar solvents are aromatic, solvents of high molecular but aromatic solvent is slowly being reduced because you must have heard on pouring these aromatic solvents decompose to BTX, benzene, toluene, xylene, which are not good for health. These are also having a lot of adverse effect on atmosphere. So this is slowly being replaced by aliphatic solvents as well as biodiesels. Biodiesel, biodiesel, what is biodiesel? Biodiesel is the methyl ester of fatty acids obtained by the hydrolysis of vegetable oils. So basically it is a methyl ester of say rapeseed oil, methyl ester of linseed oil. So this is biodiesel. Biodiesel is less harmful than all other some, uh, your solvents used in cold box. So now comes, uh, I think, a binder, uh, apart from these two main ingredients, base resin and solvent, there are other ingredients. The main one is, you must have heard by this time, it is not, uh, no longer, it is a, <coughs> a secret. It contains silence. These are coupling agents that gives extra strength between, extra bond strength between resin and sand. And these are used in a very, very low quantities, maybe 0.25 percentage, 2.4 percentage, but these are very costly materials. But this gives strength, boost strength as high as 40 percentage, that compared to that without silent. So now comes other, this release agent. Sometimes release agents are added to the resin uh, to avoid the sticking of the, your um, course to the pattern. So these are main ingredients. Then maybe some others also to specific to impart some specific properties. And now is the hardener. Hardener, the uh, resin manufacturers, they don't have much to do with the hardener. They get it from uh, different uh, sources, and it is not a polymer. It is a dimer or more a single mer. These are most commonly used hardener is diphenyl methane diisocyanate, MDI. It has got two NCO groups and these two NCO groups react with OH groups of the phenolic resins to give a your uh, hardened mass or it is a um, cross-link polymer. So here also MDI is a quite thick. It is diluted with solvents. Again, this solvent combination, uh, polar, non-polar, depending upon the expertise of the supplier or the experience of the supplier, they add solvents. But in most of the cases, this, uh, your hardener MDI content is 70 to 80% of the total. And rest 20 to 25% is, is solvent. But, um, 20 to 30% is the solvent. And uh, 
as i have told nco content of the hardener is most important you can check the nco content of the hardener which that is the active component and other it is a diluent then uh, this hardeners uh, basically contains these two components active and as well as uh, active and uh, diluent and to uh, in to some extent some additives which acts as a retardant to for the your uh, reaction between hardener and resin to increase the bench life particularly in summer it is required and most important is i have written in the last line nco you must have noticed in rainy season the hardener if you keep it in open condition it becomes solidified solid mass is solid mass is obtained that means the hardener is spoiled active component in form of your nco is gone by reacting with moisture not water even moisture it gets it reacts and spoiled how do you check it uh, in a crude way the uh, quality of the hardener number 1 it will remain thin and number 2 it will be transparent the moment it develops opacity it is gone it had, it loses its reactivity even very small maybe uh, one or 2% of water in the hardener will spoil the whole hardener so you have to be very much cautious so uh, in uh, day tanks where tanks are used for hardeners for storage this must be ventilated through desiccants like calcium chloride or silica gel so this is the uh, reaction this oh groups of phenolic uh, rings react with nco groups to give the your uh, urethane linkage which is the uh, gives the strength by conversion of the two dimensional polymeric chains to three dimensional so now comes one uh, your uh, real but lesser known fact uh, i don't know this region i have not heard but uh, in eastern and northern region many found is the talk about the your nitrogen content in the hardener and they ask what is your nitrogen content and uh, as usual suppliers they keep on telling lies to the customers that my supplier uh, whenever there is some pin hole in the castings they tell no no this is because of the ensure your nitrogen content more nitrogen content in your hardener and they start checking nitrogen content but see nitrogen content in the hardener comes from ensure if you reduce ensure then by natural your cost uh, cost will be reduced so no 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 binder manufacturer will try to give extra uh, more ensure content more uh, mdi in the hardener and you can see the nitrogen in hardener by calculation mathematically it comes between 7.84 to 8.96 considering 70 to 80% of mdi so it cannot go below or more than that in that case there will be a lot of other issues related to strength and core lower ncio means lower uh, mdi means there will be fragile cores there will be no strength and higher means it will be immediate strength will be more but uh, later on it will be having drop in strength but many of the sellers they tell that my um, my, um, my um, uh, hardener contains as low as 6% or 6.2% as nitrogen but that is never practical and that is never possible and that is never required that is never done because it is an active component and second is that nitrogen is detrimental to iron castings nitrogen is more detrimental to steel castings because solubility of nitrogen is directly proportional to metal temperature pouring temperature of steel being higher its solubility is more so before it comes out of the casting before solidification it may form subsurface or surface porosity although cast iron is lesser prone to defects for nitrogen it is possible but one major <coughs> issue or may, one major parameter mostly unknown or lesser known is that nitrogen in all form is not equally equally dangerous for nitrogen to be absorbed 
in liquid metal it has to be dissociated due to elemental nitrogen and that means the nitrogen in the compound should be in such a labile form it will quickly decompose into nitrogen eliminated nitrogen which happens in the case of furan resin and hot box but in case of pep set and cold box the nitrogen in ncso is very rigidly fixed in a bond and it does not get easily dissociated with you must be knowing the name of geldal process how nitrogen is brought out in the form of ammonia with how uh, strongly by digestion the strong alkali then only it comes out so it is not that easy so although it contains nitrogen but that nitrogen is not harmful and gives it does not give nitrogen pinhole in castings unless in rare cases or it mostly comes from the melt then another uh, your safety parameter is that even in steel casting the core nitrogen specified is less than 0.1 to be to, to be uh, prone to defect for your uh, nitrogen uh, defects here it is not more than 0.07 percent is even taking into all considerations so friends yes it contains nitrogen but see that nobody can tell you that other materials are containing less nitrogen and i am facing nitrogen pinhole problem because of your hardener so now comes the viscosity uh, many of the foundries for cold box they specify the viscosity and many don't specify many feel that viscosity uh, as as low as the, lower the viscosity that is better so definitely there is a logic behind that lower viscosity means it will mix easily to the sand particles get coated properly it is being a polymer that viscosity changes any any liquid viscosity increases with decrease in temperature and for gas it is just otherwise so all liquids but polymeric liquids there is a drastic change in viscosity depending with temperature and lower the temperature more is the viscosity so why do you want to define the viscosity and what temperature most of the foundries they define the viscosity but they don't define the temperature they call it room temperature what is the room temperature room temperature here is 30 degree centigrade room temperature in uh, chandigarh it is 10 degree centigrade so you must define the history of viscosity at a particular temperature then again ठीक ओके 30 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड विस्कोटी विल बी इन द रेंज ऑफ से 30 टू 70 इन फैक्ट माय एक्सपीरियंस इज दैट द मोस्ट कॉमनली यूज यूजेबल विस्कोटी रेंज इज 30 टू 70 सेकेंड्स एट व्हाट टेंपरेचर टेंपरेचर एस द टेंपरेचर यू आर यूजिंग द मटेरियल सपोज यू आर यूजिंग द मटेरियल फ्रॉम 20 टू 45 द because of ease of miscibility so uh, this is again an uh, relative viscosity we check it by before cup and take it from me even before cups i also mark before cups no two cups are identical we have got five cups with us before cups every cup needs collabi or to be calibrated with another and you have to pay some eight ten thousand digit for calibration and this is relative viscosity but viscosity absolute viscosity is the viscosity which there is a definition and which there is a unit it is expressed in centipoes cps but that uh, your viscometer is costly and i don't think you need it we need it because we make manufacture a lot of resins where viscosity you need to check at different temperature also but the viscosity range applicable application viscosity range is 30 to 70 before cup and in cps it is 100 to 250 cps now you can see another gap if you see at 40 degree centigrade temperature these are all different uh, your resins where temperature at 40 degree centigrade viscosity is more or less same but you see if you reduce keep on reducing the temperature some 
it has jumped like anything some it is low it is maintaining low what what would you prefer in a place in a country of extreme conditions like iran i once i visited iran they are there are a lot of complaints i did not have an idea about the complaint but after visiting there i found that their temperature was minus 12 degrees centigrade and my kit material was not coming out of the barrel at all so friends the extreme conditions you need to choose the composition of the binder all the parameters your base resin its constitution solvent solvent composition to see that during the throughout the year because you are if it is in your country you can control it i can control in delhi that in winter i change the composition and make it usable but in when you are exporting it you cannot do it we have got a lot of customers at south africa we cannot do it so we have to find out a solution that throughout the temperature range the viscosity does not go below beyond a particular point and next there is a term called cloud point uh, i think that term is very not very much common to you because you never face it in tropical countries but in cold countries at a particular temperature the resin loses is transparency it become opaque it develops opacity and then it is it is basically phase separation solvent and resin they are not miscible so that at any condition when material becomes opaque some faulty formulation even in uh, tropical conditions also 30 degree also once in a while it happens the resin and solvent separates because of immiscibility so that should be avoided and any time it happens it is not usable so this is all about your humidity your temperature now comes the humidity see uh, uh, thing is that you are practicing foundry man you have been used the system cold box for more than one decade two decade three decades old this uh, people of my generation they must be using four decades and now it is the one decade everybody knows that humidity it reacts it it takes it all on the strength properties but how many foundries have got the specifications for acceptance based on humidity i think only one or two i know it was in tata motor pune the foundry is closed now it is in k file because for all other all binder systems moisture is the moisture is the enemy but in cold box system it is something more why because other system moisture gives ad adsorbed in the system physically here it reacts with the moisture and spoiling it so extra care must be taken but what you can do in uh, rainy season then what is the way you have you cannot stop your shop my problem is that being suppliers our main problem is issue is that there is no specification with related to related to your humidity so throughout the year whether it is 90 or 80 or 60 or 30 it is same but it is not possible everybody knows so my request is that why don't you maintain transparency your headache will be reduced our headache will be reduced then solution what is the solution you see whatever test we carry out in our laboratory it is just up to closing releasing from the pattern handling and closing next pouring strength is something different it is a hot strength so if you if you are sure that at a, with a particular test strength suppose 80 ps a tensile you can handle and close it why do you ask for a 150 because most of the time more the immediate strength lesser is the strength follow next strength so i my request is that uh, to become practical and sit with the people uh, with supplier also let us sort out this uh, your um, um, uh, uh, this issues this is a perennial uh, problems associated with the specification and the supply issues so and uh, this is a uh, again this uh, humidity what we check is relative humidity relative humidity means this is a percentage moisture content in air at a particular temperature compared to to that what if it is saturated the temperature 
So that is relative humidity. So relative humidity definitely indicates your more the relative humidity, <coughs> more is detrimental for the course or samples, so test results. So now uh, you can see uh, this book. You can see that uh, two, two, uh, there are two, a 50 percent relative humidity itself at two different temperature, moisture holding capacity for air varies. Lower the temperature, more is the moisture capacity carrier. Now you tell me, this is a calculus, I think, where is the calculus? Ah, so this is the calculus. Suppose, you have got two temperatures. Today it is uh, 30 degree centigrade and your relative humidity is 50 percentage. And tomorrow it is 20 degree centigrade and relative humidity is same, 50 percent. So which is more detrimental? More detrimental is 30 degree centigrade because that although humidity is 50 percent, the moisture carrying capacity or moisture of in the air is much more. It is almost double than what it is at 20 degree centigrade. So, you need to, uh, there is a calculation, you can uh, find out I have done it. So, from the, these charts are called psychrometric charts, it is available in the literature. So, you can find out at what temperature and what humidity, how much the moisture carrying capacity of your. So, now is the concluding part, the sand test, which I have already told you. In most of the cases, uh, what we do? we uh, specify the AFS number of the sand and we tell that AFS number, at this AFS number, 10 should be there, but uh, you must have experienced. AX, AFS uh, number is part of a big story, small, it's a small uh, part of a big story. In the same AFS number, 10 sands will be having 10 different characteristics for strength properties because many parameters are known like morphology, structure, coefficient of angularity, all these are there. But at the end of the day, theoretically by looking into distribution of all other properties, there is no expert who can tell my this sand is showing gives 100 psi, what this sand will say. It's not possible, you have to see by testing only. So this is the calculation. Suppose you have got two temperatures. Today it is uh, 30 degree centigrade and your relative humidity is 50 percentage. And tomorrow it is 20 degree centigrade and relative humidity is same, 50 percent. So which is more detrimental? More detrimental is 30 degree centigrade because that although humidity is 50 percent, the moisture carrying capacity or moisture of in the air is much more. It is almost double than what it is at 20 degree centigrade. So you need to, uh, there is a calculation, you can uh, find out I have done it. So from the, these charts are called psychrometric charts. It is available in the literature. So you can find out at what temperature and what humidity, how much the moisture carrying capacity of your. So now is the concluding part, the sand test, which I have already told you. In most of the cases, uh, what we do, we uh, specify the AFS number of the sand and we tell that AFS number, at this AFS number, 10 should be there, but uh, you must have experienced. AX, AFS uh, number is part of a big story, small, it's a small uh, part of a big story. In the same AFS number, 10 cents will be having 10 different characteristics for strength properties because many parameters are known like morphology, structure, coefficient of angularity, all these are there, but at the end of the day, Theoretically, by looking into distribution of all other properties, there is no expert who can tell my this sand is showing gives 100 psi, what this sand will say. It's not possible, you have to see by testing only. Uh, I have given the code name. These are collected, three sands are from one foundry. They are used in uh, three different sections. And one is from Rajasthan source. So there are four sands. If you can see, most of the sands, uh, all the four sands are having more or less same AFS number, but uh, this is the graph, this is the graph uh, of the distribution, uh, these are all single peak sand, is well uh, distributed, when definition of all oil distribution is that 
four consecutive shifts decision should be more uh, greater than equal to 90 percent although it's very rare but many cases it is possible and you get the the foundry men get it now comes now comes a small uh, this is a small example in our laboratory we um, um, every day we take uh, uh, eight ten cent tests and every day we have to test a new batch what is what is coming out of the reactor what is coming of the plant we test it with reference to a master sample there is no other go you can match the properties you can see the same resin same sand same a these two days with the variation in humidity temperature how the strain properties has differed that the persons who do carry out the test day to day they only know otherwise it's very difficult to believe also this much of variation is possible but it is possible and uh, so now i think this is the four uh, sands i have uh, you are giving you these are the four sand and these are the strength properties of four stand under identical condition on the same day at a same uh, ratio one is to one and you can see the results are <coughs> results varied but natural result has to vary and it has varied basically um, thumb rule is that what we have decided is that for a good sand your uh, up to humidity below uh, between 60 to 70 it is you can good sand you can use at 0.8 between 70 to 80 it is 0.9 more than one uh, more than 80 it has to be one person to get equivalent strength so this is a thumb rule you can see because you cannot it you cannot expect that at throughout the year and throughout the all humidity you will get the same strength not possible with this system of course today's systems are much more humid resistant than what it was a decade ago but still with all these things definitely you cannot top the reaction between moisture and NCO. It can be reduced and we have done it and we have analyzed samples from various countries and we have found it, nah, there are, not, nah, there are not, nah, not much great formulations even in Europe. We have got samples we have analyzed from Europe, from Turkey, we have done it. Now it is again. There's another belief is that I have seen the specification uh, or two three foundries they have uh, specified the strength properties at uh, different humidity means there are two specification one is below 80 another is above 80 but they are both the cases they have kept the immediate strength specification same but it is not the case even in immediate case also it's are starting from mixing whenever you pour the resin in the and hardener mix together it absorb atmosphere moisture and strength starts degrading so even immediate strength also it is affected. This is a lesser known fact and to realize this, it also took time for me. And another parameter is there you must be knowing, that is the equilibrium moisture content of any material. That is the moisture content at a particular humidity. So equilibrium moisture of different sand particles stands also may vary although in ppm although sand is not a adsorbent for humid moisture but still there will be some pure at ppm level so to sum up binder component on pucb is neither novolog nor jar a lesser known phenol formula resin called benzylic ether phenolic and the resin which we used for cold boxes PUCB, Philonic Urethane Cold Box. Urethane is the linkage between Phenolic OH group and NCO group. NHC double bond OO is the urethane group. Binder component is a solution of PF resin in complex blend of high boiling polar and non polar solvents with minor additives to impart specific properties. In spite of having nitrogen bearing compound, castings produced using cores from this binder system are not prone to nitrogen phenol defects. Humidity affects sandmic properties to severe extent. Viscosity of binder at sand and ambient temperature, binder sand and ambient temperature not 
30 degree centigrade matters for ease of miscibility or ease of distribution with sand particles. Lower viscosity is part uh, is for uniform lower viscosity is preferred for uniform coating in shooting cycle. I think that's the end of it. Thank you. <laughs> Any question? I will share till now. I am coming from Madras Engineering, Sleeper Mundo. The uh, amine uh, smell is not a health issue. If any health issue. Ah, amine. yes. Hello. Ah, smell definitely. All chemicals are having some adverse effect. But uh, it is uh, monitored in the soft floor to see that its level is maintained below TLV. So it is not uh, it is not a deadly harmful, uh, but if it goes above TLV or threshold limit value, then it is harmful. Many more many more training person, many more people is affected the smell, sir. Can smell you? smell itself is uh, uh, your irritating, no? But uh, any sickness has developed. It should because it is a widely commonly used procedure throughout the world. It is a hazard industrial chemical. But uh, it is within permissible uh, range of industrial chemicals. It is not a banned item. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, any improvement on chemistry side huh? to reduce anti-veni without adding anti-veni? Any reduction on core veining effect? Uh, uh, that is that is possible. You have to. That is possible. You see, uh, veining is basically. Uh, your uh, uh, comes from the brittleness of the core, correct? Brittleness, it cracks. Yes. So to so there are formulations. Cracks due to hot, uh, lesser uh, hot strength. There may be two. See, plasticity and uh, brittleness. These are two opposite terms. So but, uh, there are ways to increase the uh, reduce the brittleness also, and uh, there are phenolic resins which can be done. In, you have got any issue in a particular core? Yes. Sir. Huh? Yes. In manifold cores. Manifold course. We can uh, you can try our resin with this particular uh, grade of resin. We made sample. No, we have developed it recently. We have recently developed the uh, resin. Uh, the, the brand name anything, sir? Four called seven hundred HP. Mukundan. No, but you try it, no problem. See, basically, what is winning? Winning is even what is anti-winning additive that they gives you. Cushion, while sand expands, they fills the void. Correct. Sand expands and you cannot stop it, but the kill, uh, you bring the void. So, and this particular grade of uh, your cold box, it does not rupture on uh, your uh, when sand is expanded. It has got some plasticity. When con transforming from beta to alpha to beta, beta quartz at 583 centigrade. So, we can try it, no problem. Mugandan will do it. Similar is there. Hmm. Okay, thank you, sir. Welcome. Any other questions? You are talking about uh, no back? Cold box. Cold box, uh, see, cold box, only thermal, <laughs> mechanical followed by thermal. People are doing it only the people so far using in uh, iron pipe manufacturing as a socket core. But in Greens and Foundries, if you want to do it, you have to separate the cores, crush it, then finally it will be thermal. Okay, sir. We are getting reclamations and so from what where? is the, what is the recommended uh, resin binder addition level, sir? Reclamation from where? Cold box reclams or other reclamation? Yeah, cold box, cold box. Sir. What is the LOI of the sand you are getting? LOI. I want to check, sir. Because reclaimed uh, sand means uh, you have to uh, know the. Not fully we are using in the ratio, 4 is to 1. In uh, the but ratio. that po 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 quality of the reclaimed sand is fast, is that your loss on ignition. If it if it contains dead binders, then it will, it will cause you a lot of problems. But from which industry it is coming? It is from cold box core or other cores? Only for co from cold box cores. Cold box thermal? Yes. Thermal? Yes. Thermal means it will be reduced. Uh, it can be as low as 0.75 percentage. But quality of uh, reclamation should be good. Okay. It is a thermal process. So 0.8 is uh, good? Point eight, uh, see, point 0.8 now is a very common. Okay. Many of the founders, I, uh, very rarely people go below, uh, above 0.8. 
for critical course like water jacket and when you are using uh, your chromite sand or chromite and uh, silica blend but otherwise point for it is uh, more or less it is standardized we have got sand from rajasthan sources that part you can use that 0.75 also okay less than that we can proceed and this uh, uh, your uh, uh, saudi sand they are also i think uh, people use it very low percentage okay sir one more doubt in the recent day uh, last week we have faced one issue in uh, amin that i don't want to mention the supplier name in that uh, the first time we are facing the impurities in the amin tin the, like a slag uh, it should not happen that's but uh, uh, there is even the supplier itself uh, first time they are feeling it, should, uh, it must be some uh, what is the problem sir it no. must be some contamination from the barrel okay but there is amin is a very low volatile liquid ah if you keep it open that it will be totally empty but there won't be any scale left after unless there it is uh, some contamination it will not happen today morning we like that contamination sponge it sponge because you can reduce the mic what happen uh, in some cases it is only in particular particular one or two cans or all no no sir one or can huh? any any other one or can one or two recently one, uh, one can or many cans many cans many cans there is a possibility because uh, in in um, single supply huh? ah yeah, single single supply in some cases suppliers use some uh, component component uh, components as masking agent So that mm, that is possible only. Sponge, with, with, with sponge. Mm. That means it has re reacted with amine. Whatever is there, because amine, that material it has reacted with sponge. If it is in all the whole all the time, bang. But if it is one or two um, your drums, then it must be contamination. But otherwise, there must be something serious. Gojab, you are telling uh, to reduce the smell, they are adding masking agent, right? So that creates a issue. Gentlemen, any other questions? The other carrier, Kangla. Less small uh, amine is costly, right? Less small amine is costly, right? Yes. Small yes. amine. Less small amine is costly. That's what he says. See, uh, natural gas of amine, natural amine smell, you cannot suppress easily. So costly means if you add some costly material. to mask as a masking agent then it will be costly but i think man to uh, if you ask me uh, masking is not that much effective uh, is characteristic smell you cannot stop no then uh, less smell means it is ammonia smell ammonia smell same price say less smell with the same price cannot be No, no, no smell. It is higher price. Yes, because they are adding masking agent to reduce the smell. That is why it is costly. Can't less uh, low smell. Yeah, low smell means they are adding masking agent there. Uh, yes, sir, smell it is. Sir, so masking agent add pander that they have to spend so some money. That is also big. That is why it is costly. I am a supplier, no. Like. <laughs> 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 That's why I am asking. <laughs> But will it not have any effect on the process? Hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah
and uh, stipping, ti stipping time, theta, these are all getting different. W you are talking about which product? Uh, no big, sir. I am working in a no big. Ah, he is calling a no which, which, which no big? Sir, uh, Pepset, sir. Pepset. Pepset, you are getting uh, same batch, you are getting. Uh, he is not talking about same batch. He said same shipment. Uh, uh, in same, you know, uh, near two batches. In the same shipment, it was two batches. Means it having a the properties have get different. How it was? Sir, you mean to say that batch to batch variation? Ah, batch to batch variation. See, but uh, production production in the same unit. That is there. See, uh, number one for a particular customer from a particular supplier, it should not happen because. Although products are customized, they know and they they stick to the formulations and maintain that unless there is a requirement. Okay, but I don't know uh, what uh, made, made is the difference. But mostly, what happens? Uh, I'll give you an example. Cold box. Many of the way uh, we report. Many of the founders they report that the strength of one batch to another batch is varying wide range. Okay. If you make same mix and if you keep, keep on making samples in the same dye, single cavity dye, you know what are the variation poss possible in the same mix? I got it from 67.7 to 108.3. So otherwise, what we will tell that is a variation from some uh, 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 same batch, same mix. So for eliminating your doubt, you have to mix both the bases under identical condition in the same mixer. Then only you can comment. Otherwise, not not possible. I, I am not ruling out. It is not possible. But what I told you is try that. It should not happen. Every customer has his own requirements and suppliers, they maintain it depending upon their requirements. The resin which we supply to a particular customer may not be the same we supply to the adjacent customer. In Kolapur, we have got five customers for cold box. This Ghatge Patil, Menon and Menon, all are different grades they go. Once you standardize it, if you go, if you go to investigate what is the, why this difference is, you will not get the answer. This is better. You just see which formula set is working, keep on giving that, that's all. And nobody, nobody will uh, your, uh, accept that. I have been using this sand for the last five years, but I have been also making the same resin for the last 40 years. So that happens, no? And sand is a uh, heterogeneous material. Same foundry. There are two sands, coarse sand and laboratory sand. This is different. So that is possible. We have to be transfer. We have to accept the fact. If you are more transparent to the suppliers, so it will be sorted out more easily. And you see, with our experience, we know na, what is to be done. Every problem has got a solution. But we have to, we have to be transparent. We have to be uh, co cooperating each other for investigation. Many of the cases, they tell you, no, no, we'll not uh, test it in your patients. We'll do ourselves. We'll let you know. It should not happen. I am not going to know the secrecy from you. We are there to sort it out, and we need more business. That's all. And your interest to get a consistent material throughout the year. So both will be benefited. Mm -hmm. All manufacturers, MSDS recommended for storage is 25 degrees Celsius. Which product? I don't think cold, cold box they don't mean. I mean is there? MSDS 25 degree only there. Maybe I mean is volatile, no? Otherwise it may produce pressure. No, otherwise not. But none of the company is not maintaining 25 degree temperature. What will happen? Storage. See that is a that is a that is called a, uh, some sort of uh, avoiding some sort of legal responsibilities. That's all. That is a, there is a, there, uh, in my previous company, I got a NC uh -huh. because of this issue. 25 degrees, what did I mention? That is called disclaimer. You know disclaimer? Disclaimer means I will not be responsible beyond that. So <laughs> that is the SC. I also visited the manufacturer. Uh -huh. they are, in the open shed only they are manufacturing the material. 
they are storing that. That is there, but while you are writing their MSDS, they will uh, ask you to keep it. Yes. That is a disclaimer, but there is a reason for amine, but not for others. Hardener and resin, you need not keep it. Unless temperature goes very high, 40, 45. Once in a while, what happens, no? If the it, solvents are there, if it uh, high temperature, it vaporizes. And uh, maybe rarely there is a chance if the seat is weak, that may burst. That's all. You keep in uh, your um, shadow, under shade. That's all. Sir, after core making, uh, we are did some operation like uh, whole coat, mold coat. We are strengthening hmm? that core. Hmm? So, uh, is there any chance to reaction with that uh, hardener? Which one? Binder or hardener with coating. If it is water-based coating, yes, sir. Uh, water-based uh, water water coating. My uh, thing is that you see, um, definitely. But after you bake it, no, it yes. gives some additional bond, so it is compensated. Yes, sir. Yes. It okay. see these resins are hardened by a uh, hardener as well as if you bake it, some extra bonds are formed. Yes. So one is uh, reducing and another is increasing. More or less, it will be. It will not drop much. Some drop is possible. Uh, that's why in many of the specification, you can see the dry strength is, uh, main strength is more than your uh, bake strength. That is the reason. Okay. Uh. So, uh, we are producing core, same process we followed, uh. Uh, same operations. But in uh, end, end, end process, we are uh, make castings. In casting, some part have uh, that fused cores and more. But some part have uh, didn't like this. It's uh, fully see, uh, uh, re filled our re requirement. Um, see, the basic reason may be the poor compaction yes. of the sun at that area. Oh. See, if it's a c corners, compaction is must. Yes, and sir. that I told you, you know, fluidity of the um, or viscosity, uh -huh. that plays a major part. If con compaction is poor, then a lot of uh, problems will come, particularly this fusion. Yes, sir. In porous course, that will happen. Oh, yes. The question list is getting longer. I think we can have a discussion during the dinner table. Okay. Thank you, sir. Very formal. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much. It was my pleasure to share my experience for the last four decades with you people. You are all experienced foundry men. You know most part of it. And I have tried to your inform you, get you information for parts which many may not be knowing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Vijay. Oh, thank you, gentlemen. I think we have come to the end of the session. I think interesting are The questions are going, uh, more questions are coming. We have to stop it because we are uh, running out of time. We don't want to keep you, you know, your hunger, you know, open. Okay, to now to facilitate our uh, dynamic speaker for the day, Mr. Deepak Kumar goes. Now I request Mr. Adilingam, our IF Chennai chapter council member, as the speaker with the uh, Angavastram, please. Sir, <laughs> uh, Mr. R. Saktivir Tenakarsu, IF Chennai chapter immediate past chairman, to facilitate the speaker with the memento, please. Okay, good evening. See, you cannot uh, facilitate as such a person unless we say some words about him. Known for 35 years, boss. We are known for 35 years. When I was young, we had a very critical process. Still you are <laughs> Okay. So he helped me a lot. He stood there in the shop floor and demonstrated how it will be made. So that is the way I know uh, uh, Mr. Deepak Ghosh. But also when uh, Vice Chairman said he was uh, authority, right? So authority is to be exercised or controlled. The people who are having authority is to exercise and control. But he is a competent person. Competency only can able to disseminate. It could be knowledge, right? So whenever we called him, he used to readily come forward to disseminate his knowledge. Either it could be in the shop floor or in the forums like that. So I've been much thankful to him for the year. Because uh, uh, in India, I've been uh, interacting with the most of the manufacturer of especially resins and uh, core coatings, all of them. He is the only one who can able to do it. I don't think any other supplier has such a person. So that is a strength, uh, right, boss? And so yes. with all the thanks for him to coming all the way to the Chennai to disseminate your knowledge, you. please coming it whenever is possible for us. <laughs> Thank you. Then.
Thank you, sir. I think uh, I don't have to talk about the seminar, and I think already everybody has witnessed the way of it has delivered, and is the the subject is the subject expert. People call it a subject expert, and we have got a right subject expert to deliver the today's topic. And I would like to thank our today's speaker uh, for Mr. Deepak Kumar Ghosh for taking his prime schedule. I think he has got uh, some international trip tomorrow. That busy schedule, he has uh, given time for the members to disseminate his knowledge. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. And we also would like to uh, express our thanks to Forest Polymers Management for sponsoring this uh, technical seminar to disseminate the knowledge to our uh, members. Further, I would like to thank all the participants who took time to come. Maybe you know. Chennai traffic la varadunnade periya or city la or edathil nunna eduthu varadhe periya vishayam you took time pain and come here and uh, made this event very successful thank you very much thanks for your valuable time and we also like to thank all the company members who have deputed their employees to for this seminar and we from chennai chapter conduct uh, such as uh, programs regularly and we request you to take part in this and then give us lot of strength and i think most of the people you know and the chennai chapter is having a youtube channel called i have chennai chapter and even today's program is getting recorded it will be hosted and if you are not able to find time to get into webinar or something like seminar and you can go to youtube channel and uh, acquire the knowledge and subscribe this and you can also spread the message to across the country fraternity and we would like to thank once again for the, all the members and uh, we will we'll be seeing you on next uh, seminar and we request you to join uh, all of you to for our fellowship and dinner and it is served in the terrace please join us okay thank you very much thank you thank you